Oh, okay. All right, so now it's recording. Okay. It's on. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get started because I think it should be about, because I don't have my watch on me, but it should be just about seven, I believe. It's like so, five, too. Five of, yeah. So we're going to let her get everybody an opportunity to come on that are going to be joining us this evening. We're just about ready um, for the brand new, uh, brand new development series brought to you by the Black Professional Men, of course, and JNF Enterprises. Tonight, we're going to just have a great time discussing uh, discussing branding for the entrepreneurs and the business owners and organizations that will uh, be listening in tonight and then also hopefully during the replay, too, uh, as well, because we want to take this opportunity to uh, enlighten, empower, and impact you for the for your business in 2018, giving you those tools, giving you the, the knowledge and information and resources that you can use to be able to take your business, take your brand, uh, and, and your uh, take your business, you, your business, and your brand to that next level that you that you want to uh, get to. No matter what level you're on, you can take it to that next level and decide and, and understand where it is that you, where you are, and then also understand where it is that you're trying to get to uh, in that next level. So we want to welcome everybody. And as you're coming in, um, <clears throat> you can, uh, if you want to, if you're going to have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the comment section there. And if, uh, if, if I'm not able to, or if we're not able to answer them right now, then of course we will certainly uh, get back with the answers. So you want to definitely make sure that you put them in the comments sections. We definitely want to hear from you. We definitely want to make sure that we are doing uh, those things that are giving you know that's giving you the opportunity to be able to get your answers question uh, ans questions answered, uh, and also give you the opportunity to be able to hopefully learn something that you may not may may not have known or that you may have known already but you're able to kind of look at it in a different way because there's nothing better to me than actually uh being able to um see something that you thought you you know you threw new in one particular light and somebody says something that makes you look at it in a totally different way and you get a new perspective on it and and you can actually say wow i never thought of it that way and now that you think of it that way you can actually uh, do something even more with it than, than what you thought you could do. So uh, I enjoy, I like when that happens to me. So hopefully that, that'll be one of the things that can happen to, um, to those of you that are listening tonight. So uh, we hope that you will get something. We hope that you'll gain something. We hope that you will be able to um, do something with the information uh, and the resources that we, you know, that we give to you this evening. So we're going to get started. I want to thank everybody for joining us. My name is Leroy McKenzie Jr. I am the president and CEO of JNF Enterprises, which is a distribution, publishing, and business consulting firm located in Baltimore, Maryland. And what we do is we provide book publishing, uh, book publishing products and services, as well as uh, business consulting services for individuals that are looking to either write a book or who have authors who have already written a book, but are looking to gain more uh, exposure, do more branding, as well as businesses and organizations that are um, that are already in business but are looking to gain more exposure, do more branding, and then those aspiring entrepreneurs. Um, because as you know, or may not know, but that's one of the uh, things that I am uh, passionate about as well as Black professional men is passionate about is bringing to you um, information and resources that you can use uh, in order to be able to take your business, take you uh, to that next level. So we, we work with um, individuals and we work with other organ organizations uh, that are looking to improve and impact the community in a great and positive way. So uh, I do want to take this opportunity real quick um, to have the president 
of black professional men to kind of just say hello, give black professional men, uh, give you all a little bit of background and information on BPM, who they are, what they do, and just the phenomenal stuff that they do uh, here and in the community, because uh, it's a great organization that I'm uh, a part of and that I wholeheartedly believe in and, and what, what they do, what we do, and what we try to uh, achieve here, not only in our city, but, but um, serve as a blueprint for what other uh, men's organizations can do in their cities as well. So I wanna introduce everybody to um, Brother Hassan Diggs, who um, y'all probably hopefully are familiar with, but if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> and you, I'm gonna let him do a little bit, talk a little bit about black professional men. So good evening, sir. All right. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Um, Hassan Diggs from Black Professional Men. So our mission is to ensure the future of African-American males. And we believe strongly there's a simplistic way to do that. Stronger man makes a stronger family, which makes a stronger mm. community. Absolutely. And, um, we believe in it, it takes a team to accomplish everything. So we always are looking to collaborate with like-minded organizations to help everybody accomplish their goals. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's one of the things that we're gonna be talking about this evening is collaboration, sponsorships and and partnerships and just how important they, you know, the part that they play in uh, in being a part of your brain and how you should incorporate, how that should be incorporated in uh, in your brain and how you use your, how you use uh, partnerships, sponsorships and collaborations to be able to grow your brand because it should be a mutual uh, beneficial uh, agreement mutual uh, beneficial partnership that uh, that you go go into to be able to not only help your organization your company but also the other uh, as the other part of that partnership collaboration as well so um, we want to uh, thank you for that. Hey, brother, uh, real quick, for, for the men that may be listening, um, can you just tell them a little when how they can connect with uh, BPM and then when the general meetings are that we, you know, that we have? All right. So our general body meetings are on the second Wednesday of every month. Right now we are meeting at, more, at our Morgan State in the business building. Um, our meetings are from 6 to 8. However, if you go to our website, and look under events, you can see um, the many activities that we have <laughs> to kind of meet an individual where they are. So if you are an entrepreneur and you want to be around other entrepreneurs trying to um, increase their profitability, we have programs for you. Right? If you are a person who wants to enhance their workforce development path, we have mm. activities for you. If you are somebody who just want to be around positive people moving forward, we have activities for you. So, like I said, we have something that uh, can meet an individual where they are. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and for those that aren't familiar with the organization, like Hassan mentioned, this organization has so many things that are going on. Um, this being one of them, the brand new, uh, uh, the brand new development um, development series that uh, that we came up with to be able to assist um, the not only the the business and organization members of BPM but also the to broaden it out and and the other um, you know other organ other businesses that that are out there and that are looking to to be able to just grow themselves other entrepreneurs or even aspiring entrepreneurs that are looking to grow this is this is something that bpm offers or is offering uh that you know that assists the community in being stronger and being better uh, and what better way to do that than to be around other like-minded individuals? You know that the, um, you know the, the organization uh, is bringing you this, you know, this kind of information that you not not necessarily may get it from from anywhere else. But this is one of the things that that black professional men thought it not, um, uh, you know, not a bad thing to be able to partner with J N F Enterprises. And to bring uh, bring this you know knowledge and information and resources to you, so that you can be better and do better in in your business and your community and all of those things. So that's just a little bit about um, who 
both of us are, what we do, uh, and and uh, just to let you know a little bit about us and our backgrounds and, and things. And we'll repeat this before we go, the, um, the contact information, where you can go uh, to be able to find inf more information about BPM, where you can find more information about JNF Enterprises. Um, but we'll get into uh, this this evening, kind of like our topic for this evening, and that's um, the brand new, which is actually the, the title of the series, uh, and what we're going to be talking about tonight, branding and and the importance of branding, the, set, the strategies that you should have in place in order to be able to, um, to do uh, strategic planning, branding, and also do to do successful branding, because you have a lot of companies uh, that don't necessarily understand what branding is uh, or how to effectively uh, incorporate branding uh, into what it is that you do. So we're going to be talking a little bit, of, we're going to be talking about that tonight, those strategies. We're going to give you those strategies just in a, in a little bit. But we want to start off, I want to start off just by defining branding and, and to give people an understanding of what branding is. And branding is nothing more than what people um, say about you, what people think about you when, uh, when you're not around. If you think about certain companies and you think about um, what they do, what comes to mind uh, when you think about that particular company, that's what branding is. If I were to say uh, Nike to you, most people would think, you know, just do it. They would think about just do it as the slogan necessarily. And then you think of the, the swoosh. If I if, if showed you the swoosh, um, which is not, which is the check mark, show you the swoosh, you would associate that with, with uh, you know, with Nike. If I said it, um, said some, if I showed you the, the golden arches, the, the golden arches, you would think about McDonald's. If I said it, you could have it your way, you would think, that's what you would think about uh, Burger King. If I said, um, uh, something like Xerox, you would think about copiers, you would think about papers. If, if I talked about Marriott, if I think about, uh, talked about Hilton, these are certain companies that you think about, um, but when you think about them uh, from a branding standpoint, you have a certain expectation of who they are, what they do, and the products and services that they offer to you. That's nothing more than branding. You know, um, and there are some companies that are awesome at it. There are some companies that, you know, that work very hard at um, at their brands and uh, and have an understand, have a clear understanding of how to effectively brand themselves, how to effectively uh, think about themselves. When you think about, um, I know when I think about branding, you know, I think about certain, I think about speakers, I think about Les Brown, and I think about um, his thing is, um, uh, what did he, I think, what does he say? Miss Brown's baby boy, I think he says. Um, but that's kind of his his tagline that he has with himself. When you think about Les Brown, you automatically say Miss Brown's baby boy, and and because he's he's incorporated that into who he is as a speaker uh, and even as a um, even as a business so branding you want to make sure that you have a core understanding of who you are what your business represents now it, just to give you an example um, the example for JNF Enterprises my company uh, it is my branding brand is to enlighten empower and impact those are the the three things that JNF Enterprises represents. So when you think about my brand, those are the three things that I specifically target for you to think about when you think of anything that's associated with my company, JNF Enterprises. It has to have those three elements to it. It must uh, enlighten you, it must empower you, and it must impact you. And what that is, is that it must teach you something, it must equip you with something, and then it must impact you to want to do something. So that's what my brand is. That's the JNF brand. Black professional men, as, as Brother Hassan said, is ensuring the future of the African-American male. That's what they do. That's what Black professional men does. So everything that Black professional men is associated with is to ensure the future of the African-American male. 
and the th the projects, any projects that that black professional men are associated with, any partnerships that black professional men are associated with, it is a so it has that particular branding uh, that is associated with it. You know that when you deal with black professional men, you're going to deal with something that deals with the future, ensuring the future of the African American male. And your brand should, shouldn't should be associated with something that has nothing to do with your company. You have to be very careful to um, to which you attach your brand, to attach your business, your brand to, and even yourself. Because when people see you, they associate you with your business, but also with your brand and who you are when you think about it. So all of those things, uh, when it comes to brand, you have to understand that definition. And that's going to be one of the things that um, if you're, if you're right now, you want to write down, you want to, you want to think about what does your company represent and and i'll put it like this each company should have a culture what is the culture of your business what is it that you want to not only infuse in those that will work for you or that are working for you but then also what the uh what what the business world and, and others that will buy your products and services what they think about when they think about you what kind of culture do you create and that you have at the core of your at the core of your business so those that, that's the first thing you want to do you want to make sure that you uh, understand what your culture is what is it that you represent as a business what do you stand for what is it that your business stands for what is it that you want people to think about that they first think about when they think of your business so that's the definition of what you know what uh, what a brand is or what branding is because a lot of people as I mentioned don't Don't really understand what branding is and the second thing is is people get mixed up when they talk about um, When they when they talk about or think about branding and marketing they think of those as being um, uh, The same thing, but it's not branding and marketing are two separate things branding is what you what you want people to think about you, your business, your and your corporation and everything like that. But marketing is showing those particular your particular target market what you have to offer and why it is that they should be buying your product or service from you. What is it that you are what problem is it that you are solving for them? That's what marketing does. Marketing says to someone, here's a problem, here's what uh, here's the answer that we have to that particular problem. And here's how we can solve that for you. So when you understand the difference between branding and marketing, and even uh, I'm going to add another one to that is sales. When you add um, sales to it, sales is nothing more than the transaction. Once you have the target market, they understand that you have a particular answer to their problem. They see that you have an answer to their problem. They say, wow, I want to go out and I want to purchase that from you. So that's the distinction between those three elements of your business, sales, marketing, and branding. They kind of, they intertwine, but at the same time, they are distinctly different. So you want to make sure that you understand, uh, that you understand that, that there is a distinct difference between Marketing, branding, and sales. So for those of you that are listening, you can write that down. Define what your market is, but also uh, define what your brand is, but also understand your marketing, how you're going to market to uh, your those individuals that you are the answer for. And then sales, which is showing them why they should buy uh, your product, your service from you as opposed to someone else. And when you can do that clearly and distinctly, then people understand and you understand exactly <laughs> who you are, who your target market is, and then also um, whether or not they fit uh, your criteria and then also whether or not uh, they you fit their criteria or they fit your criteria. Uh, as far as being a being a match, a good match for what it is that you have to do, and you have to understand that as a business, 
that's what you do. Even uh, when we get into the different strategies, and we'll talk about that, um, and the, the first strategy we'll be talking about is partnerships, you have to have a clear understanding of what I just mentioned to you about defining your, uh, defining your brand, understanding your market, your, your, and, and understanding your market. Um, and being able to market to them because that's going to determine or be a part of the determination of who you partner with, you know, the partnerships that you develop. You know, you don't want to go into, you know, you are, a, a, you know, a, a, um, you know, a, 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 a mechanic shop where you fix cars, uh, but you, you know, you, you partner with somebody who doesn't have anything to do with, you know, with, with cars. So you want to make sure that your, that your partnerships line up and you the, <clears throat> the beginning of that is by defining your brand. Like I just mentioned, understanding who you are and what you represent as far as your, uh, your, your business and your brand culture. What is it that you want people to think about? Um, and then also the, the, uh, your marketing aspect of it, which is, how are you, you know, showing that you fit with that individual, fit with those individuals that um, that you're going after with your particular, um, with your particular uh, product and service that you offer. So once you've done those two things, then you can go into your strategy one, which is the partnerships. Uh, partner, and I call it three things: partnerships. Um, collaborations, which Hassan just talked about, and then uh, sponsorships. Those three kind of um, intertwine or they line up together. Uh, and you have to think of it, uh, think of your brand in, in those, three, uh, those, those, three, those three ways. What partnerships can you develop? What collaborations can you do? And then even, even what, um, what sponsorships are going to be, you know, are going to be beneficial for you and for the, you know, the other organization that you want to uh, partner, partner with. So those are three important things. When you think about sponsorships, when you think about collaborations, when you think about um, your partnerships and who you should partner with, you want to think about the vision of that particular organization. Does it match up with yours? Is it in alignment with what you represent? Trust me, the one of the the big no nos in, in you know in um, in branding is being connected with somebody who um, who has nothing. One, like I mentioned, has nothing to do with uh, what your particular um, business is, but then also the vision that you have. Where your visions don't line up, you know, they're thinking one thing, and and you're thinking a totally different thing. You know, so you really want to hone in on those partnerships, those collaborations and, and those sponsorships. Uh, I know me specifically, uh, one of my assignments this year for my for my business was to have more partnerships, to to begin part, more to do more partnerships, to do more uh, collaborations and even sponsorships so that I would be able to enter or be able to gain more access to uh to different um uh different get exposure to different um individual different organizations different people that i would not ordinarily have had i not had those those um, partnerships or even those sponsorships um now hassan uh did you want to talk a little bit about sponsorships and 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 the importance of them and and what that means to to bpm and and, and what we're doing this year uh oh I don't know if he can hear me. Can you hear me, Hazar? Did he freeze up? <laughs> I think he must have froze up. But we'll come. We'll come back uh, to him. But what I'll say is, you want to think about the partnerships. You want to think about collaborations. You want to think about sponsorships. I'll start with the partnerships first. One of the things that I that I did with my uh, specifically with partnerships was I actually sought out different. Um, companies that I could partner with that were uh, that had the same vision that I had that were um, that were wanted to accomplish kind of like the same things we didn't necessarily have to be doing the same thing um, but we were doing something that was mutually beneficial and I'll give you an example of that one of the partnerships that I developed this year was with a 
um, with a, a web designer, web developer, um, a promotional um, promotional company. And what they what they do is they actually design websites, they do book covers and all of those things. So when we got together and we talked about the different things that each of us did, me doing um, me doing publishing, I needed someone who could do book covers. You know, I needed someone that could do book covers. I needed someone that could do websites. I needed someone that offered um, promotional material that we could, you know, that we could have done. So in uh, going out and doing that, I partnered with someone who did those exact same, the, those things, but also not only do those, do they do those things, but they had the same mindset uh, that I have when it came to wanting to uh, impact uh, positively uh, people and, and the lives that we would be encountering uh, throughout the work that we were doing. So that partnership work has worked out just great between us because the uh, any referrals that she has or they have, they would send my way and any referrals that I have, of course, I'm sending them their way. These are the first individuals that I'm going to when I have a project that I'm doing as far as books are concerned, as far as websites are concerned, uh, as far as um, promotion material is concerned. This is who um, who I, you know, say this is who I partner with. This is who I work with. So whenever I'm doing any projects, this is what they do. I, I knew what I, I brought to the table. They knew what they brought to the table as far as the partnership. And we were able to uh, come to a mutual agreement on what they would do, what I would do, and then how we work together in everything that we, you know, in the, the different things that we that we do. So that partnership has has done um, great. Does has worked out tremendously for me. And why did has it worked out well for me? Because and for them, it's worked out for us because we both sat down and we we looked at our businesses we looked at our vision we looked at our purpose we looked at our our mission for what we were doing individually and then we understood that what we could do collectively was was nothing more than than beneficial and it has grown uh, their business because they get attached to my network and the people that i may be associated with and then i get uh, I benefit from it because I get attached to the uh, business and individuals that sh that they're connected with, and they get exposed to me. And had that partnership not um, come together, then neither one of us would have, you know, have have had these people that we weren't attached to. They wouldn't be connected with us. So that's how partnerships work. And that's a, you know, that that's what one of the things that you really want to hone in on and think about as an entrepreneur. How can you um, use partnerships to grow, uh, grow and expand your business? Um, the next thing I'll talk about is sponsorships. Sponsorships work out very well as well. Um, but with sponsorships, you, you want to develop a, a checklist for, for yourself. And you want to develop, once you develop that checklist for the things that you are looking for uh, in a sponsorship or in a partnership, in a sponsorship uh, as well, and, and then a collaboration, because you want to make sure that you have this checklist and your checklist should just include the things that you're looking for. Does their vision match up with yours? Does their mission match up with yours? Does their purpose match up with yours? Does their product match up with yours? Uh, or the service, does their product or services match up with what it is that you are doing? Um, and when you can go down your list to, to be able to decide whether or not this will be a, a good sponsorship, it'll be a good partnership or good collaboration, you can look at your checklist and say, wow, okay, this is something that I believe that can work for them, it can work for me, uh, work for us, uh, and all of those things. And, and sponsorships, you really want to think about um, who you sponsor, where you sponsor, and how you sponsor. Um, you want sponsorships are are nothing more than you they, and they work in a couple of different ways. Um, you can sponsor an event uh, yourself as a as a company, or you can sponsor be a sponsor at an event. Um, and if you're going to be a sponsor at an event, then you want to make sure that the event one is um, 
it is beneficial for you and that it it's hitting the target market that you you know that you're that you're trying to um, gain attention from you know you don't want in your sponsorships you want to be strategic about it you don't want to just be sponsoring an event just to be sponsoring it you want to be uh, strategic about it because you want to make sure that uh, um, after the, the after the sponsorship uh, you're better off after the sponsorship than you were before you had the sponsorship. Um, so you want to make sure that going into 2019, because we're, we're heading into the fourth quarter of 2018. So from this point forward, going into 2019, you should be now thinking about what sponsorships you want to uh, have going into 2019. What are those events that you want to be associated with? What are those um, businesses that you, you know, that, that you want to be connected to uh, in, in all that you do. And that's part of why you do sponsorships, because you want to be associated with uh, certain uh, organizations and certain causes and, and things that are going on. Um, so that's why you do sponsorships. Um, just to give you an example of, of mine, um, one of the organizations that I am um, that I've been a part of uh, is the Women Offering Wealth. And they've had um, several events this year that my company, JNF Enterprises, has been a sponsor at. Why am I a sponsor at, uh, at these events? Because what Women Offering Wealth, the events that they've had, one, I believe in what they were, you know, the events that they were doing, but I also believed in the uh, information that they were giving out, the attachment to the community that they have, uh, the things that they were trying to achieve in the community. And all of that goes into, like I said, it, uh, do you have a common vision for what it is that you're trying to do? And myself, um, JNF Enterprises being associated with Women Offering Wealth, that's a, it was a great opportunity for me to not only um, to, you know, to be a sponsor at one of the events, but because I believed in what they were doing. So you want to make sure that you're, um, that you're strategic about those sponsorships that you do uh, and that you, um, you want to be a part because you're going to be attached to it. You're going to be attached to it, um, getting your, you know, getting your, your, um, your name out there, getting your brand out there, getting your brand associated with certain um, organizations, getting it associated with um, certain events and all of that. Uh, another sponsorship that I, you know, that I just had, um, one of my business associates, she had a, it's called Mogul Empowerment Conference um, out in Arizona. Now, I wasn't there, but my company, JNF Enterprises, was one of the sponsors. I was one of the sponsors of the event. Why? Because I believed in, one, the event that she was putting on um, and, and what they were doing, but then, two, the impact that, uh, that it was having uh, on those individuals that would be at the, at the conference, and I knew what they were going to be, um, you know, what they were going to come away with the conference from. So I wanted to make sure that my, you know, that my company was associated with something of that caliber, something of that, um, you know, that, that level of, you know, of, of, um, of excellence that, that they had. And, uh, and that way it gave me more exposure to an audience that I would not, I would not ordinarily be able to be associated with, but, um, because I have, you know, because I did, I was a sponsor at the event, or at the, I was a sponsor for the event. Now, my my logo, my my name, all of the things that my brand that JNF Enterprises is representing um, was out there, and I wasn't even there. <laughs> I wasn't even at the event. So that's how sponsorships can benefit you. That's how sponsorships can work for you. Um, even the, the great things that we talked about that Black Professional Men is doing. They have, they have, we have so many events that are going on, and there are sponsorship opportunities. You have a great opportunity to be, to be a sponsor, and they, they offer that as members, as, as a member of BPM. Your company can be a sponsor for an event that we have. 
So those those things can benefit you when you um, when you attach to an organization, when you see a um, you see that you have a common vision, you see that you have a, a common mission and what it is that you're trying to do. Uh, that's that's where connecting with uh, business with with organizations with causes and all of those things that um, that you can be a part of just to show you how 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 powerful brands are and how how powerful um, sponsorships are. Uh, I know people may be familiar with all of the things that are going on with um, that had happened with Colin Kaepernick with taking a knee and all those things and, and the Nike uh, Nike actually backing him and his campaign um, for uh, for what he you know for his cause and everything like that. And but not only was it powerful for Nike to put him as the face of their just do it campaign, but as a result of that, a direct result of that now he has the backing of Ford Motor Company. Ford Motor Company recognized what Nike as a brand was doing and said, wow, okay, hmm, I think we need to be associated with that. And they decided to put their brand and their, um, their, you know, their, their brand and, and who they were as a corporation behind that same uh, his same cause so it, it's it, it you're it, it it's very important how you how you use your brand uh, and then also who you t associate your brand with trust me most of us know who nike is most of us know there's not too many of us that don't know who nike and ford are and those two those two brands say a whole lot when it comes to um, uh, brand recognition, when it comes to being out there. So them being sponsors um, for Colin Kaepernick and his, uh, and his cause are, are huge, are huge. So that's how powerful your brand can be and how being associated with certain brands uh, can, you know, you can be. So the next, uh, the, the next thing that we're going to talk about after um, your your brand after your sponsorships and after your collaborations, which is, and that's kind of, to me, that's it. That's your foundation of, of, of your, your, uh, of your brand and building a successful brand of, of having a strategy in place. So that's your, to me, that's your first strategy is, is um, building partnerships, building sponsorships, building collaborations. That's how you build your brand. That's how you're going to build out. But the second thing, uh, the second strategy is uh, your technology. What technology are you using? <laughs> you know, what technology are you? This is the 21st century. And uh, here we are on a um, using technology right now to affect what we do. Not even, what, five years ago? I don't think Zoom was, was around five years ago. If it was, it was, you know, um, wasn't something that I was using five years ago, yet it alone 10 years ago. So, um, but technology, how are you using uh, technology to effectively grow your brand? How are you using technology to um, expand your, grow and expand your brand uh, in a big way? Um, Zoom, using Zoom, using Facebook Live, which this will be on as well. All of those things. Can you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um you know, th th that, that is huge. How you using technology, uh, how you use technology to, um, to brand do you, yourself. Do you have any, um, how do you put this? So when it comes to branding, uh -huh. can you provide an example of why you would use technology mm. as part of your branding strategy? Wow. Um, I'll give you I'll give you a, a perfect example, um, and it's a personal one. When I, um, I I was talking to my um, my my marketing uh, my marketing consultant, and I was working with her, and she she gave me the assignment of of posting to social media three times a day. She said, I want you to post three times a day, um, in the morning, in the afternoon, and then in the evening. 
Um, and she said, your, your morning, she didn't really give me what, what it had to be about, but I kind of worked my way with doing it this way. And this is how it benefited me. It, it has benefited me. Um, in the morning, the posts that I do are, are motivational. Um, in the afternoon, it has to do with my business, uh, whatever it has to do with my business, whether um, like I did the, um, the, the video for this particular event that we had coming up with the, the brand new development series. I did a video for that. Um, and then, you know, and so I'll do different things that I'm, if it's something that I have going on with my business, I'll, you know, that has, that gets done in the afternoon. And then in the evening, I do what's called my evening conversation. And I just take, um, usually what I take is I take anything that has to, has to do with nothing, but I kind of have like this competition thing where people have to choose something. Um, like tonight, uh, after I get off this webinar, I'm posting um, the evening conversation is going to be, um, I have two movies. The, the, uh, and the two movies that I am um, pitting against each other are the, is the Five Heartbeats and Dreamgirls. And it's, which movie was better? Which movie did people like better? And so those are the three types of posts that I do. And what that has done for me as a business, people are like, wow, you know, one, the, the motivational one gets people motivated in the morning. They're like, wow, I really like your post. It really, you know, really helps me to, you know, to be motivated be, uh, and everything like that. Because usually I associate, I put a picture or a couple of pictures with the motivational post. Um, the thing in the afternoon, and I try to associate either pictures or videos to go along with it because that assists you with people getting to know you. And then even uh, the one in the evening is always a picture with it. So what that has done, that's grown my business because people see those posts that I'm, that I'm doing and it's helped my brand to be able to grow. And then even if I'm at an event um, that, I'm, that I do, or that, that I'm a part of. I get, I get that part. So but what I'm asking is that. Uh -huh. What was your original goal before you started doing social media? Oh, well, and you mean as far as why, would I, why did I go to social media? What made me start doing social media? So there's a reasonable expectation that you have a goal to reach a certain amount of consumers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And or have your products and services exposed to a certain amount of consumers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I'm assuming you had a goal of that sort. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so understanding with marketing, it takes four to seven impressions <laughs> for people to catch on. Right. Right. Now, right. social media it kind of clouds that because people are on social media for different reasons. Absolutely. Or the same person is on social media at different times of the day. For different mm -hmm. Right. So right. It can be on, like if, if, if I can be on Facebook and I seldomly post on Facebook personally, like I may do a personal post very seldom on Facebook, mm -hmm. but I go there and I look at it and it just helps me escape to a nothing world, right? But then with LinkedIn, when I look at LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn for kind of specific reason because LinkedIn is more of a business type. Right, exactly. Type thing. Mm -hmm. Now, um, don't, do, don't do Twitter, don't do Instagram, but can imagine you know, when you go there, you also go there to, to escape. Now, there's times I go on Facebook and I go there specifically just to forward mm -hmm. posts that I know that was posted about black professional men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I go and I look for them and I forward them and then I go about my business. <laughs> okay. right. I see, right. It'll be things that I see then that are about business. Mm -hmm that might catch my eye. Right, absolutely. When I'm on there for a, a to escape, I don't look at business stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, oh, go ahead, go ahead. 
So I, I was saying that to, to, to say to you or to ask to you in this example, what was, what was the goal that going to social media was satisfying? Well, the, the goal for my, my goal for me, as far as like the, the number of people that I wanted to be able to reach, honestly, I knew I was going to reach probably a certain amount of people on faith through Facebook. Cause I used three, it's four. Um, my social media includes Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, and LinkedIn, right? Those are the, those are the, those are my four platforms. That I that I touch on. Don't use the uh, out of the out of those four. I probably use the least um, LinkedIn, but the other three because I have them connected um, through um, you know through Hootsuite and and through the way that I post. Um, it, it it can put a, it can disseminate the information all at the same time to those different networks. And my goal was to I wanted to be able to grow my exposure. Let's say by you know uh, by like five or ten percent right um throughout the throughout the year for and you know five ten percent increments and the only way that i was going to be able to do that is to is by being consistent with what my um my my marketing um consultant told me to do she you know she showed me hey if you do this consistently the three times a day then your your brand will grow by that 5%, by that 10% that you wanted to grow um, uh, as far as the exposure goes. And even, um, even, even with the business that you do, even growing your, your business, because as a result of the brand uh, exposure, people then want to, you know, do start doing business with you. And you mentioned, you mentioned something very, um, uh, some key that you talked about when you go on to your social media platforms, you're going on there for a specific reason. You're going on getting off, right? And it's almost like going to the store. Most men, when we go, when we go to the store, we want to go, we want to, we know what we want to go get. We're going to go get it. And then we're going home or we're going, you know, to the, on to the next place. And that was one of the reasons why she told me that you do it three times, do the postings three times a day, because, the same person that is that may be on social media in the morning isn't going to be the same person necessarily that's going to be there in the afternoon. The one that's there in the afternoon isn't going to be necessarily the same one that's there in the evening. And like you, they may have a a, a, a particular reason why they're on there. They may not be looking to do business. They may not, may not be looking to be motivated. You know, so the reasoning may be di may be different for why somebody's on, and if you're doing that constant rotation, then you're gonna hit some. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna get, um, you're gonna get more, um, you're gonna get more exposure because of the different times that you're doing it. Like you talked, um, you know, like you mentioned when you're on, you know, when you're going looking for specific things. You may not be on there, like you said, let's say you go looking at eight, nine o'clock at night. You're not necessarily looking to be motivated at eight, nine o'clock at night. So, you know, anything that's posted that may be a little motivational isn't necessarily going to catch your attention. You know, you may be looking for something business oriented and you're more than likely going to be doing that in the afternoon. You might do it and you might do it in the morning. And you, you, you might be doing that at any part of your day, just kind of depending. So if I have something that's that's kind of on that you know on my page or or that maybe in the news feed do you, that may catch you, you be like, oh, let me check that out, you know. So and that's how and that's how that's happened with some people. So let me let me ask you this this question here. So this is more or less from a scientific standpoint, right? Okay. So when I was going through my my master's program, they had this. I went through statistics, right? Uh huh. And it came up with 95% and a 98% um, percentile. Are you familiar with those? Mm -mm. Okay. So 98%, the 98 percentile basically means that with the marketing, you're going to get a 2% return. Okay. Right, 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 right. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. on, on, on whatever your marketing is, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. And the only thing you have control of is what that 2% is based on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like with, with, with VPM, our goal is to be able to have 100,000 
people on our network. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So our 2% is based on 100,000. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right now, when I first came on with BPM in 2013, our network was 162 people. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. In the network. Mm -hmm. In our email, we got over 4,000 people in our email. On LinkedIn, okay. we got over 6,000 people. Okay. Facebook group, we got like 1,700, I think. Facebook page, I think we're at maybe 1,300. Okay. But then we also are able to use Kendrick's Twitter. Mm -hmm. he, he has 15,000. We also use hit one of his email platforms. He has an additional 8,000. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that all adds up. Now, right, exactly. The reason, the reason why 100,000 is the number is because we will be able to monetize our network mm -hmm. at 100,000. Mm -hmm. So, to me, it's that concept of if you accomplish A, you'll accomplish B. So, if you accomplish A, which is to be able to market to a large group of people and have exposure to them, mm -hmm. then you know the purpose of business, regardless if it's nonprofit or for profit, mm -hmm. it is to make a profit. And so, right. once the organization reaches that hundred thousand network threshold. We will be able to monetize that and then mm -hmm. make where our network generates revenue for it and all of the tools that we use to generate that, we then will be able to reap the benefits. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So from that standpoint was the basis of the question I was asking, what was the goals that you had that made you, that made you specifically go to social media. Well, I knew I knew that social media was going to like you just mentioned, it was going to give me the exposure that to 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 people that I would not be able to meet you on any other platform. That's what that does for you. It gives you that 100,000 that you just used as an example. That that number, your 100,000, you know, was is where you're trying to be. Now, I'll give you just one particular platform that I use, which is my, um, which is my YouTube channel. I want to be able to, I want to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of this year. Right. So mm -hmm. I know if, if I want to get to a thousand subscribers just on YouTube, I know that I have to do certain things to direct people one to my YouTube channel and then not just get them there, but to get them to subscribe. Same thing like you just talked about with with um, with Facebook. I'm at five thousand there. With mm -hmm. um, you know, even with with um, uh, with Instagram, there's a there's another uh, two thousand there. So those numbers, you know, will get me to that ultimate. That I guess the ultimate, the the big number like you have, which is a hundred thousand. Mine isn't quite that big yet. I'm not there to where I want to reach, uh, where I can say, I'm, you know, my goal is 100,000. I want to first, let's say, let me get to, you know, let, not 100,000, but let's say, uh, let's say, let's say uh, 70,000. I want to get to 70,000 total. Right. Now, you know, now is that, is that doable? Yes. But that means that I have to do certain things like, like we just talked about, like I just talked about earlier, that are going to give you that kind of exposure. You only get that kind of exposure with partnerships, with collaborations, with, you know, with sponsorships, because that's how you're able to um, reach a, 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 a great number of people at one specific time, you know. Exactly. You know, yeah. and that's because because the name of the game is, and, and I know you know this, Hassan. The name of the game, it's a numbers game, because you just talked about that two percent, ninety eight, that ninety eight to two percent. That is so true, because for every hundred people, that means for every hundred people that you talk to, you may only get two that will buy your product or service. 
No, 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 no. You will only get two that are interested. What? Okay, well, that are, that are interested. Yeah. So then, yeah. So that makes that that makes that two a whole different hundred percent. Right. You know. So so just I mean think about think just think about that just from that small number we just used a hundred. Did now take that to where you talked about a hundred thousand. Right. To so, that hundred thousand, you may, like you said, you may own out of that hundred thousand, you may only get two hundred that think about saying, you know what, I wanna, I, I wanna buy, I wanna use BPM's products or services that they offer, you know, or I wanna use JNF Enterprises products and services that they offer. Yeah. So I think, but I think one of the the things that we should, or you should consider also sharing with with, with the audience, is the call to action. Mm. So in 2003, I started a newspaper, right? And I was in Atlanta and I was like, okay, um, rolling out, they did 50,000, they did 50,000 um, newspapers a year. No, a month. They did 50,000 newspapers a month. And I, I read their marketing kit and they okay. had, they had some interesting words, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't use that they had 50,000 papers read. Okay. They say they had 50,000 people that was reading their papers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they had 50,000 papers circulated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, do you know what secondhand marketing is? Well, it's kind of, well, secondhand is just kind of, it's not, um, it's kind of a let's say a back way of where you it's not your primary source of, of being able to get your product no, or service no, out there. No, secondhand marketing is marketing that when I tell you something, mm -hmm. the percentage of you telling somebody else. Somebody else, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they figured in their secondhand marketing. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. which is smart. Mm -hmm. Into their pitch. Okay. So, you know, so you can say, let's say their secondhand marketing is 25 to 50%. Which is, which is secondhand marketing is just another way, correct me if I'm wrong, another way of saying referrals. Yes, but it's, it's referrals of the information that one received. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, your secondhand marketing of your I'm sorry, today's age of secondhand marketing is comments, likes, and shares. Okay, right, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely, today's absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But in 2003, um, it's a reasonable expectation that if you put something in and rolling out, it may get exposed to 7,500 people mm -hmm. by that definition. So then, when they ask you for $500 to advertise in it per month, there's a reasonable expectation that that may be worth it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was 15 years ago. <laughs> right, right, right. And so that $500 is not what people charge even more to post social media posts. Mm -hmm. All right, so I say all that to say that um, I think part of the branding element or part of the branding strategy you may want to share is having people account for that secondhand marketing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people don't understand the impact of what they do. So on social media, um, like a Kendrick, he won't take any pictures with alcohol. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I know that Kendrick, he does enjoy a beverage, but he won't take any pictures with alcohol because he understands, hey, well, number one, you can't take that, that picture down. Number, <laughs> number two, he doesn't know when that picture is shared who is it going to be seen upon? And Absolutely. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, 
um, I think that plays a role, the secondhand marketing element, to to brand it. Absolutely. And I think that uh, for those that are listening, um, that understand what Hassan, how important uh, what Hassan just said. And, and what people do need to understand that um, how you can use uh, your, how you use um, social media in order to be able to um, effectively increase your secondhand market. Because it, it by having, I, I was, and I was watching this um, YouTube today and it, it's a young, um, her name is, is just, just, hilarious she's actually a comedian from baltimore right i didn't know who she was you know but i just happened to watch this um i was watching the video she was on um the breakfast club the and and they show their videos and she was talking about her um the number of followers that she has and so after i watched the video of course i went to her you know went to her social media sites to check out who she was and, and everything like that. She evidently has been, you know, I mean, is, is blowing up big time, you know, is, is blowing up big time um, on, uh, on TV because she's a part of a show that's on Fox now. Um, and she's done, you know, she does stand up all over the place and, and stuff. And I was just like, wow, I didn't know who she was. Um, but she has to look at her followers. She had like, I mean, um, I, I can't remember the, the, the number off the top of my head, but I think it was something like 120, over 120,000, maybe even, I think, um, followers. So, I mean, her following was, was large, was very large. Now, just from that video that I watched of her, like you just talked about, I then became that 2% that says, wow, let me look at who this is. And now let's say she, you know, she's, she, she goes on to be in a movie, you know, wow, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to go be, you know, go probably, you know, maybe support that movie one because, you know, she's, she's from Baltimore. So it's like, Hey, you know, you want to represent those people who, you know, who come from your hometown and stuff like that. But then two, that exposure she got from just being on that show probably garnered her even more, um, you know, followers and everything like that. And even, I should say, even more supporters because people will then go out to support the movies that she's going to be in or watch the shows that she's going to be in, which grows her brand and who she is. And she becomes, she then becomes more marketable um, as an entertainer because her name grows with that. So understand that power that you have with that with that secondhand marketing that you just talked about, Hassan, and, and how effective that can be. You know, that that's a that's a very um you know that's a very powerful thing. And and understand how um you know how we can use our platforms, how we can use technology, and I'm gonna put it like that, technology. Because it's not just, to me, technology, um, secondhand market is not just your social media, but it's also your website. Um, it, it's actually also your, um, you know, the, the YouTube channel that you hopefully will have as well. Uh, and, and all of these things that we're talking about when it comes to branding are connected because if you have a if you have a YouTube channel, if you have a Facebook page, if you have a Twitter, if you have a, a LinkedIn page, all of those things that you are that you are doing um, posts to, that you're doing uh, uh, disseminating information uh, from, people will 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 gain will come to those platforms that you have, and then hopefully gain more information about you, your products, and your services. Um, you know, when, when they, when they actually do that. So understand how technology works with your, um, you know, with your partnerships and your, and your, um, you know, with your partnerships and your, your sponsorships and how that gains, gives you exposure. Because if you are doing a sponsorship, then the event that you are sponsoring 
will more than likely uh, have a um, have a website. Will actually have a um, ha have a, a um, you know have a page that people can go to or social media page that they can go to. And everywhere that they post, they will see people will see who it is that you are as a sponsor. So understand how powerful that is and, and how the technology ties into it, um, into your partnerships, how technology ties into your, um, your, your sponsorships. And then that'll lead me into the, the, the next strategy, which is the exposure. The, and we just talked about it. How do you gain exposure? If your goal, and this is one of the, the, the next thing that I want you all to, to write down too is what's your you know, like Hassan just asked me, what is, is your, um, what is your, your social media goal? You should think about how many, um, you know, how, how many, uh, if you're on Facebook, how many um, Facebook friends do you want to have? If you're on um, uh, Twitter, how many followers do you want to have? If you're on Instagram, how many followers do you want to have? Uh, if you're on YouTube, how many subscribers do you want to have? And well, I think I think also, but so social media is is one thing, but then you also want to look at the population. So for each generation, there's certain mm -hmm. generations that social media can reach and certain generations that social media would not reach. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I feel like Absolutely. some businesses, like a lot of the younger business owners feel like, I think they make the mistake that they feel like, their customers are like them. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. They don't market to themselves versus to market to their to the demographic of the services that they provide. Right, and that goes to what we were what I was talking about at the beginning is defining who your who your target market is, understanding who you are as a brand. Who are you? Because if you know who you are as a brand, then you understand who it is that you're marketing to. But I think I think who you are as a as a brand is not the right, not real accurate. Because most businesses want to make money, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I'm 25 years old, right, and I have a business that does that does consulting, right? And I think that, hey, all of my customers are around my age. But how much disposable income do people around your age have? Mm -hmm, absolutely. So if you, so then it goes into, okay, well, what is my ideal customer? Mm -hmm, well, absolutely. Your ideal customer may have right. dollar disposable in absolutely. income per month. Mm -hmm. Well, if that if that's your ideal customer, then what's the profile for that ideal customer who right. has, you know, that kind of disposable income? Mm -hmm. Well, it's probably not going to be somebody who's making twenty dollars a year. Right. And so I think a lot of people, a lot of the younger business owners go wrong because they don't properly identify their target audience or right. properly identify their business goal, identify their target audience. Mm -hmm. And, and see, the key is, yeah, no, it makes perfect sense because, because you have to, you, and that's for those aspiring entrepreneurs that are listening. Um, and, and even for those, those seasoned entrepreneurs who, who, who have to, who should be on a year um, or for each year, you should be looking at who your target market is. And the, the key thing is what you just said, uh, what you just said, Asan, was doing a profile. You want to give your target market an actual, you want to make them an, an actual person. Would they look like, you know, they look like this, they spend like this, they work here, they have this amount of disposable income. I know that they're between the this particular age category, you know, this particular age category. When you have a a a drawn out um, checklist, just like I talked about having that checklist for your event, whether or not you want to be a part of a sponsor for an event or you want to partner with anyone, you want to do the same thing for your target market. 
as a brand, you want to make sure that you have a check, that you want to do a profile of who it is that you're actually going after. If they make 50000 a year, if they make $100,000 a year, where do they live at? What age, what age category are they in? When you can actually give that, per, give that target market and give them a, a, an actual, make them an actual person that would walk up to you or that will pick up the phone to call you, what is it that they look like? When you can be that descriptive, <clears throat> when you can be that descriptive in understanding who your target market is, then like you said, you don't have the mistake of being, you know, if you're, if you're young and saying, Oh, my target market is only between the ages of 25 and 35. Because, yes. because or 25 and 30, because I know 25 and 30 years old aren't more than likely aren't making a hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, I don't have a disposable income of, you know, let's say five, ten thousand dollars a year, something like that, or, or whatever number that you that are going to be attached to it, that they're going to be uh, the, the, that they're going to be using. So that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, hey, did you um? I just sent you a, a message. Did you see it? No. Uh. Uh. How do you how do how do you send it? Because I'm sure it came through. But if you if you look at participants. Mm -hmm. you, should, you should be able to click on chats. Okay, yeah. Okay, hold on. Get oh, if it'll stay up. There we go. Did you get it? I just see. Well, I clicked on participants. I just see. But I don't bottom, see anything. You, you should see chat. Okay. Yes. Okay. Chat. All right. All right. Okay. 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 No, I got it. I see. I see. I see. I, see. I know that you're recording this, so you're gonna show it later. But um, just just wanted to to let you know that. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, but um, but yeah, I talked about um, the gave the 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 um sponsorships and and um, I talked about I didn't necessarily give a a, a definition, no, but, but got, I talked about the importance second, of the sponsorship. Second message, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Cool. Cool. So. Um, cause, uh, and once you, you're gone and then I'm going to be just a little bit, cause I have a couple more that I'm going to go over and then I will be, um, then we're going to be in this session and we're going to have the, the next series will be next month, the third Monday of, um, the third, the third Monday of October. Uh, we'll be doing the same thing. We'll be back with, a, of course, a new message um, or new, I should say, a new um, topic that we're going to be talking about. But tonight we're talking about branding uh, and the importance of um, the, the, st the strategies of, of, of branding and then uh, how important it is. So the first thing that we talk about, just to do a quick review, um, I know he's gone. Um, the... Um, the next thing is partnerships. We talked. The first thing we talked about was partnerships. Understanding what partnerships are, understanding what um, uh, collaborations are, and then understanding what um, sponsorships are. Now, understand partner sponsorships are where you, you know, where you particular, where you as a a business are um, getting behind a campaign or getting behind a particular event that someone is either another business is putting on or a particular individual is putting on and you decide to um to back that particular person or that particular event with whether it's monetarily whether it's through the knowledge that you're going to be sharing whether it's through resources that you're going to be sharing whatever that sponsorship looks like the different sponsorship packages that um you know that that people use so you're able to actually um, do it different ways in that. So um, you can take those sponsorships. The first strategy we talked about was partnerships, sponsorships, and uh, collaborations. The, next, the second thing that we were talking about were, was, um, was technology, how to effectively use technology, how to, um, to be able to um, look at the numbers behind technology and what you use technology for. The, the, um, the next one was exposure. What kind of exposure um, are you gaining by using technology and by using, um, uh, using technology, using partnerships, using sponsorships, and all of those uh, and sponsorships and collaborations. Um, and then the next thing that I want to talk about is um, is 
having an events calendar and having a um, having an events calendar and then a calendar of events. And there's a difference in the two. An events calendar is something that you, as a uh, as a company, as a corporation, that you should have that you put on different events that you put on, and you can then have sponsors for. You know, it, um, depending on the kind of event that you're putting on or that you're having, you can have different sponsors, someone who believes in what it is that the event that you're putting on and wants to support it in that kind of way. Um, so having an events calendar um, like this, this is, BPM has an events calendar where you can go onto the website and you can see all of the events that BPM is either putting on or is a, are a part of uh, in what they do to effectively um, be a part of the community. So that's the events calendar. Now the calendar of events is your events that you as an organization are attending. Now I talked about um, partnerships, I talked about sponsorships uh, and collaborations. Um, that is going to that's going to filter into the the calendar your calendar of events because you're going to have events that you go to you're going to have events that you um, you know that you put on that you schedule to be at I call these my be in the room calendar I mean my be in the room events so you can write that down be in the room calendar that's your be in the room be in the room event. And, and your the calendar of events should be just that. Those events that you know you must be, it's, it's imperative that you, they're important enough for you to be in the room because within that room is gonna be um, someone, some corporation, some organization that you can partner with, that you can gain exposure to that would not ordinarily have the exposure uh, to you had you not been in that uh, in that room, many of of um, partnerships, many of collaborations, many of sponsorships have come because of those be in the room events. So you want to make sure that you have um, that you have those two. That's an events calendar and a calendar of events. So I need you to write those two down. Um, the next thing is just your um, when to increase your products, when to increase your services, and that's nothing more than understanding um, if you are at the point where you where you've grown your business uh, to the point where you want to um, you can add, either add on products or services, <coughs> excuse me, or the other thing along with that with the increase of products and services is where you have products and services in that you can add to what it is that you offer to your clients that you already have, where it becomes beneficial for you to offer the next thing that's attached to your product or service that you already do that will assist your clients that you have um, in uh, doing more of what it is that they do. Because when you do that, when you increase your products or services or expand it, then you're able to um, offer your clients or customers more things that they can uh, get from you. And, and one of the things that I learned being in corporate America and working for the, um, the companies that I worked for was they were able to increase um, what they offered to their, their clients or customers. Why? Because they expanded the products and services that they offered and the importance of that and seeing and understanding that. Uh, and when you do that, you act. What you actually do is you actually um, add additional, a di an additional line of income um, for your source of income for your business because that customer now sees, wow, okay, you you gave me, you offer me this. Now you now you offer me this as well. So oh, okay, cool. I don't have to go somewhere else to get this from you know from uh, from somewhere else. I can actually get that product that's you know that particular service that I might have had to go get it from somebody else I can now get that directly from you or you see that they have a need your client particular client has a need uh, and you're able to fill that need um, by offering them an additional product or service.
So that's how you increase whether or not you, or how you determine whether or not you know you can or should increase the products and services that you offer. When you see a need that your clients have, and you, and you kind of will, you'll kind of notice that your um, that your clients start to ask you for same or the same or similar things. You're like, wow, okay, that, I think that's something that I need to be offering uh, to them. And the impact that that can have on you, the impact that it can have for on them, um, and and some companies have been great at branding themselves. Why? Because of the products and services that they were able to now increase uh, and be able to offer. And I was talking uh, to one of my um, uh, Facebook friends about that the other day. I said uh, yesterday um, we were talking about companies that have um, multiple. Um, multiple products and services that cater to specific markets. You have a, um, a high clientele market, you have a mid-level clientele market, and you have a, a lower end clientele market. And when you look at it from that perspective uh, in being able to brand yourself, then you're able to say, okay, I have multiple markets that I can, you know, that I can, um, that I can go to or that I, that I market to uh, that um, I don't necessarily have just one particular market that I have to stick to. I have a couple of different markets and it becomes a, a great um, leveraging business leveraging strategy for you. Um, and it's, it's similar to what they call in this um, in, I guess in um, the stock industry, stock market, dollar cost averaging, which is where you have, you don't put your money all in one particular stock. You want to have it in multiple, uh, multiple stocks. That way, if one particular market is down, the other, other two will be, you know, are possibly up or hopefully up. And then you may have one that's, that's doing very well, but one that's not doing so well. Um, and all at the same time, it, it keeps you, it keeps the cash flowing. And when you have multiple products that you can offer to your um, to your clients and or you have the like I said, the different tiers of markets that you cater to, then it becomes a, a cash flow cycle that you created for your, you know, for your particular business. And just to give you an example that I gave uh, in the um, hotel market. Um, I used to work for a company called Extended Stay. What Extended Stay did was, st Extended Stay was like their mid-level uh, property that they had for people who were staying, of course, for an extended period of time. That's the name Extended Stay. They were staying for months at a time. They might be staying for a year or something like that for whatever reason. Um, but they also had the um, the the lower, uh, I guess the lower end um, market that they catered to with the particular hotel um, brand that they had, um, and then they had the um, the upper um, market that they catered to uh, as well. That were it was three different products that they offered to three different markets, but it it was the same product but in three different markets because they understood who their target market was, and the key was they understood who their target market was in each particular brand. They knew that the high client, the high end, wanted this particular kind of hotel product. They knew that the mid-level wanted this particular kind of hotel product. And they knew that the lower end wanted this kind of um, uh, hotel product. So they were able to understand who they were talking to, who they were marketing to, um, and be able to meet those particular needs, or as I say, be the answer to those particular markets for that particular kind of client that they had. So when you do that, you become, um, you give yourself the ability to be able to be more successful. So um, that's what you want to do with that. The last thing, or the next to the last thing is, um, is promotions. Um, and, and what you want to do with your promotional aspect is, is like we just talked about, um, part of that has to do with your, um, you know, how are you getting your brand out there? How are you getting your name out there? Are you doing the sponsorships to get your name out there? Are you doing um, particular, are you doing uh, events that are going to get your name out there? Are you a part of events 
that will get your name out there. What kind of networking are you doing? What kind of network are you doing? And, and the things is um, developing uh, your pitch. Whenever you want to promote yourself, you always want to have a, a 30 second or what they call an elevator pitch, which is how long it takes you to get from, you know, from one floor to the next floor. You usually have about 30 seconds in order to be, uh, to be able to tell someone who you are, what you do, and how you do it. And that's what your pitch is. You know, um, and the question that you can ask yourself is what items have you developed that can that are, um, that can be given as a get their attention uh, items? What are you doing that promotional promotions is about that? What can, what are you going to do? Or what are you doing to in order to be able to gain the attention of your target market? Because if you've already done the partnerships, if you've done the collaborations, if you've done the um, if you've done the um, the sponsorships, now that you have people, uh, you're in the position to be able to get the people. What are you going to do to gain those people's attention so that they know who you are, what you do, and how you do it, and how are you? effectively explaining to them that you are the answer to their particular problem and how you solve it. That becomes what your 30 second pitch is. And what is your end goal in your promotion? Why they need your product or service? It should be as, as, um, as Hassan talked about, what is your call to action for them? What is their call to action? How is it, what is it that you need them to do to be able to purchase your product or service, to be able to get connected to you, to connect to you, you give them a call to action. You give them something that they have to do. Click here, uh, go here, do this, do that, in order for them to be able to be connected to you. Promotions is about connecting uh, your clients to you. How do you get them engaged with you? How do you get them to, um, to now that you've gotten into the position where they see, where they can actually see you, but now they see me, now they know what problem I solve, now what it is that they have to do in order for me to be able to solve their problem. And that's the sale that we just talked about. And the last thing I'm going to just talk about before we go um, is the, the brand, brand you concept, the brand you philosophy, which is your next level is your best level in understanding that. What's your next step? As an entrepreneur, as an aspiring entrepreneur, what is your next step? If you're an aspiring entrepreneur, then your next step is to sit down and to develop your checklist. Developing your checklist for, um, you know, for where you are in, you know, for where you are in starting your business. What is it that I need to put into place right now in order for me to be able to, whether it's the business plan, getting my business plan together, whether it's doing my research for my, biz, for my business plan, do I need to do some marketing? Do I have my business plan already together and, and I'm ready to implement it, but I need to put myself in a position where I can grow my, you know, where I can actually begin to uh, engage people in the product and services that I offer. Do I need my website? Do I have my website up? Do I need a website up? Do I have my social media platforms um, out there um, that I can connect to? What do I need to do in order to be able to, to get those social media platforms set up? Um, all of those are things that you that are get what your next step is. So start thinking about what your next step is. Um, during your yearly maintenance checkup, and this is for those that are already um, in business. Are you doing your, you should be doing your yearly maintenance, your, your, your kind of checkup where you go to your business plan and you look at your business plan. What was it that we did well this year? What was it that we need to work on this year? Is our brand saying what we want it to say? If it is, cool. What do we need to work on to get to that next level of branding? Um, if it's not, what are the things that we need to work on in order to be able to um, to get our brand where it is that we uh, want it to be? And, and, um, and I'll repeat this, and, and I've said this um, years ago, uh, the beginning of this year, um, 
is I developed for my for my clients. I developed a um, uh, a, a an, an analysis sheet, and what this analysis sheet was, uh, a part of the analysis sheet was for them to develop at least a minimum of ten assignments that they wanted to accomplish this year, not goals, not resolutions, assignments. What were those minimum of 10 things? And you can do more than 10, but what were those 10 things that you wanted to accomplish this year um, that was going to put you and your brand and your business uh, in a better position by the end of the year than you were at the beginning of the year? developing those 10 assignments. So that's the next thing. With your, with your maintenance and your checkup, you should be doing the same thing now, getting ready to do the same thing for 2019. You should be already in the 2019 mode. We're going into the fourth quarter of this year, and this is, this is that, that finish strong uh, last uh, uh, leg of, of the year. This is where you, uh, if you, if those of you that are familiar with track and field, you know that last leg, that last 100 yards, that last 200 yards was where you had to kick it in gear. You had, to, well, not 200 yards, the last 100 yards was where you had to finish strong. In order for you to finish strong, that means you're thinking about where it is that I need to be, what is it that I need to be doing these next three months that are going, that is going to finish out the year strong, um, but also what is going to take me into 2019 uh, and make me even stronger. So you want to start formulating those things, doing, taking a look at this year as a year and seeing uh, where you are uh, as far as your branding goals, like Asan talked about. Did you hit those those um those 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 marks as far as the numbers of the people that you wanted to reach. If if your goal was a hundred thousand, did you reach a hundred thousand? If your goal was seventy five thousand, if your goal was fifty thousand, it was twenty five thousand. If those numbers aren't there, then how, how what are you going to do? How is it that you can uh, reach those numbers that you were try that you are trying to reach? So that's what your, your yearly maintenance and checkup would be. And then your branding culture, like I talked about earlier, your, your branding culture is nothing more than what you want people to um, uh, think about when they think about you. Like I mentioned, with, with uh, JNF Enterprises, it's enlighten, empower, impact. Those three simple things. That's what we do. We enlighten, we empower, and we impact. Everything that we do gets associated with those things. That's our brand. Our brand is to, is when you think about JNF Enterprises, you're going to think about being enlightened, being empowered, and being impacted. We're going to teach you something. We're going to equip you with something. And then we're going to impact you to do something. Those are three things I promise you that our brand brings to you, um, whether you are one of our clients or whether you are a um, – a, a business partner, an associate, or a collaboration that we do, or a sponsorship, you must have those three elements as a part of what you're doing in your, your events in order for us to be a part of that, um, you know, be a part of that event that we're doing. So that's what we got for this evening. I hope this is this has been something that has given you um, some knowledge. Hopefully, we've given you some knowledge, some information, and resources. You can go to the BPM website, check out the other events that um, that we as BPM have going on. I mean, it's a lot, you all, that um, that you can um, support BPM on JNF Enterprises. Of course, you can go to our website. Please go to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm trying to get those YouTube channel, the YouTube subscribers up, y'all. So go to the, to the YouTube channel. You can go to our face, uh, Facebook and social media, um, JNF Enterprises at JNF Enterprises on Twitter, at JNF Enterprises uh, at JNF Enterprises one on Twitter, at JNF Enterprises on Instagram. Take a look at all of the products and services that we have. We would be honored to assist you in bringing your vision to reality because that's what we that's what we do. The, um, if you have a book that you're looking to write, certainly contact us, connect with us. If you have a book that you're trying to gain more branding or do more branding on, um, to do more um, uh, to do more marketing on, connect with us. Um, as far as um, BPM is great, great, great events that we have coming up. 
all throughout all throughout these the the months and and as we say at BPM we are um, we are here to ensure the uh, to ensure the future of the African American male so that is what we do on a consistent and constant basis that's what we want to do um, JNF same way we are here to impact and and uh, influence the community in a great and positive way I want to thank you all for tuning in I want to thank you all for listening we'll see you all next month same time the third Monday of each month I mean, the third Monday of, of each month right now, the brand new development series. We hope it's been um, good for you. It's been a pleasure to be with you. And we will see you all next time. So I'm signing off for right now. And as I say, be unstoppable. We're on a mission to make you better by the end of this year than you were at the beginning of this year. We'll talk to you soon.